Hello there, my battalion and viewers. I'm the Knight of Arcane, and this might be a little late, but with the 10 year anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's, I set up a poll on what to do with some FNAF characters and animatronics, and the winner of that poll was putting FNAF into Mortal Kombat. There were some challenges here and there, but overall, I think I came up with some interesting art and lore for this. Anyways, let's check out our FNAF Mortal Kombat combatants, shall we? The Lin Kuei have been stout defenders of Earthrealm for many generations. Yet, there is one man the clan despises more than anyone else in all the realms, and look to personally end at all costs. The story of this man, William Afton, is surprisingly centuries old, even if the hatred for him from the Lin Kuei is more recent. Originally a British scholar and engineer, Afton soon started to notice the strange powers and magics hidden from normal view in the world and wanted to study it. This eventually led him to find Raiden's temple. With the god hesitant at showing the man the truth of the realm, but allowed him to train and learn like any of his other students at his temple. While he was average at best with the martial arts and other fighting moves he was taught, he excelled at learning and understanding magic, seeing potential between it and the growing technological advances humanity had been making at that time. Yet, he wanted to learn more. To know more. During this time, Afton would meet a woman from the Lin Kuei. Ballora, the daughter of the current Sub-Zero and Grandmaster of the clan, and the two would get married and have three children, Michael, Elizabeth, and Evan, and they were happy, until disaster struck. A prank from Michael went horribly wrong, leading to the death of Evan. Distraught, Afton begged to Raiden and his allies to bring his young son back to life. And while they mourned for the boy, they couldn't bring him back. Enraged, Afton went further and further into his studies, looking for any way he could bring his son back, pushing out his living family as he spent years trying to bring his son back. Ballora went back to the Lin Kuei, taking their children with her, with Afton never noticing them leaving. Then, one day, he overheard Raiden talking with the Netherrealm Princess about revenants, mortal souls brought back to life by sorcerers of high power, and Afton was furious that they kept this from him. So Afton left that night, with the goal to travel to the other realms to learn how to bring his son back for true, not knowing the terrible cost it would have to both his body and his mind. Afton learned many secrets in his travels, with the Netherrealm sorcerer Quan Chi being his greatest teacher in learning the dark arts of resurrection. And yet he could never successfully bring his son back to life. It is unknown if Evan's soul was too pure to be brought back this way, or if Quan Chi purposely made sure Afton failed. But either way, Afton became more and more obsessed with life and death. Afton used the dark magics to help him, trying to keep himself from aging so he could continue his work. But while he succeeded in a way, he also cursed himself, slowly rotting away over time, slowly becoming a revenant. Something about this corrupted his mind, and Afton came up with his own plan for immortality but he would need test subjects, both living and dead. Centuries later, he'd come to the Lin Kuei with an offer, one that would result in the second split of the Lin Kuei and the rise of the Cyber Lin Kuei. Afton's corruptive mindset saw the human body as weak, pathetic even, that even with training and magic, it couldn't compare to what he saw in the other realms. So, he planned to combine both his engineering and magic knowledge, with the intent to make what he saw as a perfect being 
through science and the arcane. And so, he started to conduct his experiments. Afton wanted to use Quan Chi's prized assassin for these experiments. A strong revenant like herself would surely make a great cyborg. But with her being freed and now siding with Raiden, he knew he wouldn't be able to use her for the moment. So he started with himself, working on parts of himself at a time, yet he was only able to go so far on himself. Afton turned back to Earthrealm, looking for any suitable humans that could prove able to survive his experiments. With some hired help from both Earthrealm and Outworld, Afton was able to get many test subjects, but over the years they kept failing. Nothing seemed to work as their souls seemed to be destroyed under his experiments. However, after so many failures and setbacks, Afton finally figured it out. The first success was on Susan Connors, a cadet for the Special Forces. She wanted to make a difference in the world, and hoped to do that alongside her friend Cassidy Blade, older sister of future Special Forces commander Sonia Blade. Even with how raw and untrained she was at the time, Afton saw the potential she could have, and believed she'd be the first for sure. Taking her away, Afton got to work taking her soul and storing it as he worked on her body, adding cybernetics, and making her corpse more machine than human. Once he was done, he returned her soul into the, her body, making her a revenant in this robotic shell. Susan was a success, Afton's first true success, and she see everything as the madman continued his work. Soon, he had five working Revenant cyborgs, along with a small handful of cyborg warriors, to prove his experiments worked. So he took his work first to the Lin Kuei, believing the ninja clan would follow him with his cyber initiative. The current Grandmaster agreed to hear him out, though was hesitant with how secretive Afton was with his Revenant cyborgs. To show how strong they were, Afton had Susan, now codenamed Wither, fight five of the best warriors of the Lin Kuei to show the potential they could have. Wither was successful against them all, even besting Cyrax, but the Grandmaster refused Afton's offer in the end, believing his warriors lacked both the human soul and spirit, and in the end would fail. This was proven when Sub-Zero was able to beat Wither after he had studied her previous fights. This enraged Afton, but fortune smiled upon him as another warrior saw the potential for their clan. Sector was impressed, and she had already had similar thoughts cross her mind before, and seeing Afton's work, she knew it was possible. She had tried to get the Grandmaster to see it too, but couldn't convince him, with Sector believing he was a simple fool, blinded by tradition. Afton and Sector then worked together to try and take over the Lin Kuei, but while they were able to kill the Grand Master, all they truly did was split the Lin Kuei, with only a third of the clan siding with them, and the rest following the new Grand Master, Sub-Zero. This betrayal earned Afton the Lin Kuei's eternal hatred that day, with the clan vowing to end Afton if they ever hear a single word of the madman's whereabouts. Those that left with Afton and Sector became the Cyber Lin Kuei, and they decided to head for Outworld, the Khan easily pleased to have more warriors and another sorcerer in his army. Sector and Afton would soon get to work on making more cyborgs, and plan to one day wipe out who they see as the false Lin Kuei for good. While Shao Kahn was quite happy with the acquisition of the Cyber Lin Kuei and the Sorcerer Afton, he wasn't fully convinced with their Cyber Initiative just yet. Sure, they were able to make some lowly humans stronger, perfect as cannon fodder for when he finally invades Earthrealm, but he wanted to see them do more. He wanted them to make something even stronger. 
That's when a Zeteran warrior stepped up to prove it worked for his master. This Zeteran was Montator, a warrior whose strength and fighting prowess made him a prime candidate to possibly become one of the Khan's champions. He was able to take on many other potential champions along with others that would also become champions, like Baraka, M Motaro, and Kintaro. Yet in the final round, he lost to the Shokan Prince Goro, easily being defeated by him, not even coming close to winning the fight. Goro became Shao Kahn's main champion and general, much to the envy of Montator. The Zaterian planned to have his revenge one day and take Goro's title for himself, but was willing to bide his time and be a loyal champion under the prince, for now. And with the opportunity these Earth Realmers had to make him surpass the prince, Montator easily offered to show it could work. So Afton went to work on upgrading Montator. While being the first Zeteran he'd ever turn into a cyborg, the human was familiar with their biology from his many years of studying. After all the work that was done on him, Montator was finished, becoming even stronger than he ever dreamed. But there was a flaw in the operation. The Zeteran became more aggressive, more willing to start fights and to tear into the flesh of those that made his anger flare up. Afton, of course, put in safety measures when he made Montator a cyborg, and a simple command from either him or the Khan would get the Zeteran to stop. This aggression actually impressed Shao Kahn even more, and he allowed the cyber initiative to go forward, allowing them a few interesting or promising fighters here or there to become cyborgs, and with help from the Black Dragons, worked on kidnapping fighters from Earthrealm to forcibly join the Cyber Lin Kuei. Quan Chi was also tasked to help the human with making more revenants and wraiths, with some then being turned into revenant cyborgs. Afton was quite pleased with these turn of events. After all, not only did this give him more bodies, revenants, and wraiths to study for himself, but also allowed him to prepare for his true goal and his plan to conquer the realms and life itself. And all this would be accomplished because Montator's pride and envy got the better of him and allowed Afton to impress the Khan. He'll make sure the Zaterin gets his just reward in the end, if he can help in Afton's true plan. Earthrealm fighters can have a multitude of backgrounds and fighting styles, be it kung fu, boxing, mixed martial arts, or the many other styles Earthlings have created over the years. Roxanne Wolfrain grew up wanting to be the best. Watching wrestling with her dad inspired her to become one herself one day. So she trained hard, going to the gym to learn how to fight, while also taking up classes on acting and singing. Soon. Roxy Wolf became a famous celebrity, able to take on many strong opponents, starring in major box office movies, and having an award-winning album. She was even set to star in a movie with the famous actor Johnny Cage, which would have been an opportunity for Raiden to decide if she'd be willing to assist in protecting Earthrealm. Until one day, she mysteriously disappeared, gone without a trace. The police and international agencies looked everywhere for her, but no trace or even a ransom was left. Conspiracy theories popped up online about the disappearance of Roxy Wolf, but it became a cold case. But what happened to Roxanne, for real? Raiden wasn't the only one with an eye for her. His old pupil Afton saw her potential and wanted her for his cyber initiative. So he had Cyber Lin Kuei ninjas abduct her from her penthouse to bring her in for the operation. The ninjas weren't expecting her to wake up early, so before they were able to make it to Afton's secret lab, Roxanne woke up. Dazed, confused, and beyond angry, Roxanne fought off the ninjas to the best of her ability and ran away. Unfortunately, her escape left her out in the middle of nowhere in Outworld, alone, 
with no clues as to where she was or how to get to a town, let alone home. She wandered the desert for days, able to find some small rivers and oases, until she was attacked by some Tarkatan bandits, thinking she'd be easy prey. To their mistake, they became her prey as she broke off their own spikes to kill them with herself. After taking their supplies and making a claw weapon with their spikes, she continued on, taking out more bandits and gathering a small following, until she came across the outworld gunslinger, Aaron Black, and his crew. He was impressed with the stories he'd heard so far of the Wolf Queen of the Desert, and offered her a place in his organization. Roxanne gladly accepted the deal, finding she loved this outlaw life more than she ever did her old life, a life she was growing bored of at the time. So with a new claw weapon and a claw glove for her other hand, Roxanne became a fierce warrior in the desert, a free spirit, and both a powerful ally and enemy to people. And while she doesn't care to go back to Earthrealm just yet, Roxanne is keeping an ear out for the group that kidnapped her all that time ago, with an intense interest to pay them back tenfold after all she's learned about them and their dealings. There might not be anything left of Afton, Sector, and the others if the Wolf Queen Roxanne gets to them first. And that was FNAF characters in Mortal Kombat. What is this Mortal Kombat world I've created? But I think these came out great, and I'm proud of Chica and Roxanne the most. But what did you think of them? Let me know in the comments along with other FNAF characters I should put into Mortal Kombat, other series I should put into Mortal Kombat, and other ideas I can do with FNAF. Speaking of, for more FNAF content we have when we turn the animatronics into stands, for the R500 subspecial, and when we turn them into mermaids. And for more Mortal Kombat content, we have when we put has -been Hotel characters into it, and when we put Kung Fu Panda characters into it. And during our last video, we decided to try out a bonus award thing. And the results are, for personal favorite, the winner is Sound Spider. For the best overall Spider-Man slash Spider-Woman, we have Sound Spider again. And for winner of best backstory of the bunch, we have Spider Rod. We're going to try this again with this video, so in the comments, let me know which was your personal favorite, which design fits the most in Mortal Kombat, and who would be the best fighter of the bunch for the fighting game meta. And if you liked what you saw, then leave a like and subscribe to join our growing little arcane town to be in the know for future videos, plans, and polls. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later!